Tonight as we gather around this table of the Lord, table of remembrance, I want to think about a couple of thoughts from Revelation chapter 7. One of the, uh, I'm going to start at verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Washed their robes. Now, a person would be hard-pressed to consider what was just said and say, Well, they didn't have anything to do with that. This was totally, as I start from them, no, they, they had a lot to do with it. They washed their robes. But it's where they washed them. This is the, we come tonight to remember his death till they come. The, is this not the communion of the blood of Christ? We, we're washing our robes. This is not something that happened one time. This is something that's like, this is a continual washing until that day when we're present with the Lord and, and we're 100% as it were saved. We're, see, we're remembering his death. We're remembering what he accomplished because we need to remember. If we let anything escape our mind, don't let it be this. Wash their robes. See, they were active. They were, they were, they were involved in... in um, their salvation. They made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, God's been very specific concerning His teaching on blood from the very beginning. God's been very specific on, on blood. Now, He gave us connections. You look to the Scriptures, there's, there's connections all the way through about blood. Anytime we're talking about blood, God's very specific about it. He's not general, very specific and, 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 he, and he would tell them, don't eat the blood. From the very beginning, this is, God was very specific. Why? Because this was going to be the means through which salvation, see, salvation was going to be held out by the blood of Christ. It was going to mean something. And so it, men had to abstain from some things connected with blood, and they had to be involved in it and other things. See, it, it wasn't like they he just said, stay away from all blood. Oh, no. And you look at the, the tabernacle worship service, and you couldn't tell the priests don't have nothing to do with blood. They had all to do with blood. It was, it was a very bloody place to be around. Blood was everywhere, being sprinkled here. and it, it, this is, it, it's, uh, My point is that God was very specific about it. Why? Because he had a very specific use for blood. And it was going to be very, a very precious thing to be seen. And, um, so it couldn't be something that men were allowed to, to make common. We had to have a respect for blood. The life is in the blood. And um, so the, when you start looking at these connections, especially with the Day of Atonement, they're, they're when, when they were getting ready to leave Egypt, and he gave them this specific thing to do with blood, and the blood was directly connected with them being saved, the firstborn being saved, or not being saved. No blood, your firstborn died. That's just the way it was. You couldn't, like, reason with the death angel when he went by. Sorry. No blood on the doorpost and the lintel. Firstborn died. But if the blood was there, ah, now it lived. Yeah. See, God's teaching us how to think about yeah. this because his son was going to come, and his death, his blood, when it said the blood of Christ, it had to mean something. And um, so God cultured men's minds to be able to reason properly when it talked about this life-giving blood which is what we um, partake of. See, where Jesus kind of drove it home to people who didn't want it driven home. When he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any life in you. And they're like, how can this man give us his body? Look, how can he give us his blood to, to drink? Well, then he's made it more, more clear, didn't he? He drove it home. Why? Because he, it needed to be. It, this is something that can't be, can't be like vague in your mind. When you partake of the Lord's table, it's not like you don't do this on autopilot. When you come to the Lord's table, you've got your mind engaged, you've got your understanding that's working, and you're reasoning this thing out. He saved me by his own blood. This is the means through which I can come unto God. He, he links it with several things. Revelation 5 9 talks about redeemed unto God by his blood. So you couldn't be redeemed except it were for his blood. 
See, they washed our robes in his blood, the blood of the lamb. Ephesians 1, 7 says, we have redemption through his blood. That's the only means. The only way that, that, that God could save man was by taking Jesus' life so you could have life. See how he's, God did this. 1 Peter 1, 19 says, redeemed with the precious blood. There's only one. There's only one in the history of the whole world that blood could save someone. That was Christ's blood. Hebrews 13, 12 says we were sanctified with his blood. Had the offering. See, when he offered, when he entered into heaven with his own blood, see, he made, he made it possible now for God to be merciful to you because of Christ's sacrifice. His own blood. That he might sanctify the people with his own blood, he suffered without the camp. See, he, he went out. You, you're really the one that should have went out. But he went out in your place, the innocent one, the one that had never sinned, in order that you might come in to the presence of God. Romans 5, 9 says we're justified by his blood. See, there, you, you, don't have, you can't be justified on your own, and anybody who's ever tried will come to the same conclusion. The law teaches you. You can't do it. You just can't. But Jesus did, and now by his blood, by his sacrifice, you're justified. See, you, you're justified from all things. You couldn't be justified under the law of Moses. You are by his blood. Hebrews 10, 19 says, You have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You can come because he's there. He, he's there. Remember, he showed in, in Revelation a picture of a lamb, freshly slain, right there, right in the midst of the throne. And if you're going to get there, if you're going to come boldly, he has to be there. He can't leave or you'd have to leave with him. Paul exhorts the elders of the church with these words in Acts 20. Feed the church of God. He's going to reason on this. Feed the church of God. Why? Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Jesus owns these people. Jesus owns these people. He bought them with his own blood. Now you feed them. You keep them alive. You keep them nourished. Nourish them up. See, we come around this table. Jesus is very careful about who he feeds at this table Amen. and who he curses at this table. We know there's some people that are cursed at this table because they eat the, the body and the blood of Christ unworthily. They, they don't remember his death the way they should. We come around to, to this table tonight for a blessing. We're, we're looking to obtain a blessing in the fellowship of his blood, the remembrance of what Christ has done. Now, reading on in Revelation 7, and I'll close with this. This... Um, one well, of the benefits of Jesus' blood, there, we haven't exhausted them all. As I just touched briefly, but there's, so, there's every benefit, every one is tied. God's tied it to the blood of Christ. He, it was he, what he did, in other words, that we get it. Therefore, because they washed our robes and they made them white in the blood of the Lamb, therefore are they before the throne of God. And serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Now remember, it's because they washed our robes in the blood of, what? of Christ now. That's why they're there. That's why God himself is going to do something. He shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. More feeding from the lamb himself in the midst of the throne. So see, this is... This is Preliminary. We come around the table now, and it's, it, it's, the Lord's given us something to do to remember him. But ultimately, see, this is a preliminary act that's going to culminate in the lamb himself feeding us in, 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 in the throne room, the very throne room of God, and the lamb's feeding us. Well, I, I, Lord, evermore give us this bread. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And I thought this was, this was significant. That God gives us this picture of what His Son's blood has accomplished, and the culmination of that won't be realized until we're there. But see, we have a foretaste of it here, right here at this table. We have a foretaste of this fellowship and... and um, 
So let's remember Christ till he come. You see how effective, how effective his blood is in making us ready to be with God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you.